Hello, and welcome to Note to 9. I'm David Leedy, and this is an extended edition. Extended Episode 2, Introduction to Java, Part 1. Okay, today we're going to do something a little different, and I'm going to have a guest speaker on the show. And I've been wanting to do a guest for for quite a while, uh, because there's things that uh, I'd like to have on the show that I don't know, and I don't know Java yet, though I'd like to, and because it's going to be very important in, in furthering X-Page development. Um, so uh, I'm very happy and pleased that uh, Jeremy Hodge uh, volunteered to come onto the show. He's from Zeta1.com, and he's been a great contributor to the X-Pages blog, and, and he's just a great all-around developer. Let, let me just tell you one quick thing about Jeremy is when I met him online on Bleed Yellow uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, I had come back from Lotusphere 2010 and I saw the demo for Project Vulcan and I realized kind of then that, you know, uh, with what they're doing, it's like, well, why can't we recreate the workspace as an X page and, and have a brand new workspace with icons and, and have a run on the in the notes client and in the web and just do that all as an X page because that that should be possible. And when I sat down to kind of start the project I, I got stuck rather quickly. So I saw him on Bleed Yellow and I asked him a question, a question on icons and and as he was answering that uh, we went to a screen sharing thing and he already had a workspace in X pages done uh, which really killed my motivation to try and do that project because I was never going to do it as good as he did it so anyway he's a he's a great developer and he's here to talk to us about uh, how to get started in X pages uh, or how to get started in using Java for the X pages developer and here he is take it away Jeremy Hello, my name is Jeremy Hodge, and I'm here on the uh, Notes and Nine screencast to talk to you about X Pages and Java development, and uh, how you can use Java and your X Pages to take X Pages to the next level. Uh, before I get started, I want to uh, take a moment to thank Dave Leedy for giving me the opportunity to post here, and I hope you guys enjoy uh, the presentation. And uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about how Java fits into the X Pages development cycle. Uh, first, we have to understand that X pages are developed and built in Java. Um, it's actually built and extended from Java Server Faces or JSF. Um, so when you are in uh, DDE modifying a custom control or an X page, you are actually modifying an XML representation of Java classes. And when you save your custom control or your X page, it gets actually compiled down to Java source code and then Java byte code, which then actually executes and, and will create the page that you see rendered in the notes client or in the browser. So for example, here we've got a sidebar custom controller. And if we dig down into the package explorer, we can actually see that it's created a sidebar class that we can actually open up and look through and see that it's actually created some Java code that creates that, uh, that content. So this automatically generated Java code that gets created uh, by DDE is what's called a backing bean. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a bean is, it's just a plain old simple Java object um, or a Java class. And a backing bean is uh, just the class or the object that represents your X page. It's the back end of the page or basically the backing bean. So the way you integrate your code into the X pages is by creating other types of beans. So manage beans, uh, validators, converters. Uh, you can even write your own um, backing bean for part or conceivably all of an X page. Okay, so that's enough of the theory behind it. Let's uh, start actually getting in and doing some Java development. Uh, we're going to start by customizing DDE and making it a little bit easier to uh, switch back and forth between an X pages uh, editor and the Java editor and so forth. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up DDE here and, and start customizing. Uh, I've got a basic setup here. It's been customized a little bit. I've got my properties, events, and problems down the bottom, uh, application navigator on the left, and I've got the uh, controls and the data panel and outline here over on the right hand side. Uh, one thing that the application navigator doesn't give you is the ability to get down into the uh, back-end Java that uh, we can store inside of the NSF. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another 
uh, view to the perspective over here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and click on Window and Show Eclipse Views and hit Other. And we're going to want to open under the Java header here, the Package Explorer. And we'll say OK there, and then you'll see that pop up. And this is going to give us basically um, access to the entire uh, back-end structure of the application. And we'll go ahead and we'll drag this over into here. And now we've got our application and our uh, uh, Java perspective or our package explorer, explorer perspective here. Uh, or I'm sorry, view. And if we uh, go ahead and we're in the X pages blog template here. So if I just scroll down here and find that and open that up, uh, you can see you've got all the basic uh, regular domino content plus a few other things. Uh, you've got the web content folder, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, you've got a, lo a local folder where all of the X pages uh, code actually gets compiled down to. Uh, you've got your, your JRE library and, and plugin dependencies and so forth. Um, so we'll get into this a little bit later um, when we start to actually build some code. The next thing we want to do is uh, add the ability to quickly create new uh, items inside of our uh, Java uh, code. So we're going to go ahead and customize this perspective to basically allow us quick access to um, the new menu basically here. We can add things to this so we can quickly add classes and interfaces and packages and so forth. So to do that we're going to go up here to window and customize perspective. And then we're going to come up here to submenus and we're going to select new. And in here, we want to go ahead and find a couple of different things here. We want to find Java. And then in there, you're going to want to select the items that you want to put on that menu. So I personally will put the uh, class, enumeration, interface, um, package. There's a couple other things you can put in there. Just basically whatever you guys want to use uh, continually, put them in there. It makes it a little bit easier for you. So once you've got those selected and you say OK, um, you'll be able to see that you can right click on a folder here, go to new and quickly create objects um, and classes and so forth very easily within your, your code. OK, so let's get down to actually creating some Java code inside of our NSF uh, for an X page. Uh, to do that, we need to start by creating a folder within the NSF where we can actually create the, uh, the Java source code and store it uh, and tell DDE to automatically compile it uh, when it builds the X pages so that uh, it can actually be used. Uh, to do that, we're going to go over to the Package Explorer and we're going to find our NSF and we're going to open it up. And we're going to come down to the Web Content folder and we're going to create a new folder within uh, there. So if we right click that and uh, you can add new and folder, for example, uh, if you added it to the uh, new menu there. Otherwise, you have to click other, uh, and then you can uh, find under general, there you can click folder there. And then we're going to give it a name, uh, something like source, um, and then hit finish. And you can see it put a folder there that we can put content in. Uh, but we've got to still tell DDE to use that folder to... Uh, look for source code to compile when it uh, compiles X pages. So let's go ahead and uh, right click on the folder. And I'm actually going to use the source folder or the SRC folder I have here. And we're going to add that to our build path. So you can right click on that, hit configure build path. And this will give you all your Java uh, project options and so forth. You can see there's a lot of different things here. Um, but we're going to go ahead and hit add folder. Uh, come down and find that folder select it and say OK, and then it'll get added to our list of build path folders, and we can say OK there. And you'll see it get removed from the web content folder here and get put up here on its own line. Um, this will basically just tells you that it's a uh, you know an actual build path that we can deal with. So we can close that up, and if you open this up here, uh, you can see I've already got a package in there. Um, where I've created some previous code, but what we'll do now is uh, start to create our actual project. Okay, and how we're going to build this uh, first application is we're going to take some some code that previously exists, 
uh, some X pages that previously exist, and we're going to kind of fit them together, uh, show you how they work together, so you kind of get a feeling for the overall infrastructure of uh, using Java inside of your X page, and then we'll build one from scratch. So let's go ahead and take a look here at um, at this uh, application here. We'll open up an X page um, for the Hello World detail. Um, and what we're basically doing here is creating uh, a master and detail record set. And uh, I talked about this a little bit on the X pages blog, kind of gave an in-depth uh, review of, of the overall structure. Um, but we'll basically touch on that here lightly a little bit to get started, and then we'll, we'll create one from scratch. So what we've got basically here is uh, a couple of buttons that perform some actions, creates a uh, document that has some content in it, um, and they all, those documents are responses to the main document, and uh, we can add multiple ones to it. So if we look at the source code for this, we've got our buttons defined here. We've got the repeat for the detail control. Uh, we've got a link to do some deleting and so forth. Um, and then we've got content, basically, that comes off from the, the actual uh, Java that we'll show you here in a second. Um, so if we uh, hop over now to our package explorer and we kind of open up our bean here, you can see there's a couple of different uh, classes here. We've got Hello World and Hello Country. Uh, and if we expand Hello World and double click on the class here, here's our actual Java class that controls um, the, ho the Hello World object. So it's basically got uh, a vector, uh, which is like an array of my countries. And my countries uh, is the of the Hello Country type. So here we've got the Hello Country object right there. And so it's a, an array of several of these objects. Um, just a couple of variables um, and some public uh, methods and functions to uh, interact with the database. Uh, we've got one particular um, method in, in particular here that actually writes data to the database. Um, and we'll get into that in detail um, a little later on. And then we've got our actual Hello Country class that actually controls a single detail line. So there are uh, three items inside of the class, uh, the country name, a capital city, and some good food from that country, and then some uh, creator classes or constructor classes that uh, actually create this object and set properties on the object down here with getters and setters. Um, so it's just really ba two basic uh, classes one that represents the master or the, the overall record, and then the detail records below with the hello country. Uh, and then they are both then utilized here in the hello world detail X page, where we start, uh, you can see here we've got a hello world add country. If we come back over here, you'll see there's a public void add country where it takes three parameters, a country, the capital and the good food. Um, you can see here we add, in this particular case, in this button, we add Germany. Um, here one, we add a blank one with add country, which you can see here, here's add country again with no parameters. Um, and then we've got some buttons for save, uh, which actually calls the commit to DB method of our hello world Java bean. So, which is this application or this uh, method here, um, and then we've got some basically some getters and setters and so forth for actually input text. So here we can use a you know a simple text input, and we can bind that to the country name uh, variable right here by using the uh, get country name and set country name. And we'll get into more detail on that here a little bit. Um, so what you do basically is uh, you create your classes, uh, give it some structure, uh, which we'll get into the actual specific structure here in a little bit. Um, here we've got two. And then we need to tell our application to actually use those classes on our X page. And we do that by looking at the web content web INF folder 
um, and modifying our faces config file. And if we open that up, you can see here we've got a managed bean, and we're telling it, we're giving it a name, so hello world is the name of our managed bean. And if you remember, we go back to our hello world detail. Um, here we use that same name, and that's how we reference uh, that class, and then we uh, specifically tell it which class to use. So if we again come back, it's going to use the Hello World class. If we come back to Hello World here, you can see we've got a public class Hello World, and it's in the package of Com Zeta One My First Beans. So our fully um, qualified class name would be Com Zeta One My First Beans Hello World, and then you can set a scope to the the bean, and that basically controls your cache level. So if you put session. Uh, this bean will be uh, scoped or stored or cached for the entire session. Uh, you can put none, you can put view, uh, just basically the same type of things you got with like session scope, view scope, uh, you can use there. Um, and now because Hello World directly, um, you can see imports Hello Country and references Hello Country and creates all those, we don't have to create that separately in the uh, faces config file here that is actually referenced by hello world and gets utilized that way okay so let's go ahead and just preview the application um, let's jump over to the actual application here and take a look at uh, a view of the master detail records you can see we've got no no documents in here created at all uh, and if we jump over to the browser here we are at the hello world detail x page uh, and we can go ahead and add a couple of countries here. Uh, you can see we've added, you know, several documents here. And if we come back to this application, you can see that they still are not created here. They're not actually committed to the database. They're actually being still held within the, uh, the Hello World object. We haven't committed them. Uh, we're strictly working in memory, which increases speed of the per and performance of the application and so forth. So if we come back now to this and actually hit the save button, and that would instruct the class to actually commit these records to the database. We come and refresh that here. You can see we've actually created the records that uh, from this. We've got one master record, which represents this whole document. And then these individual doc documents here, the for, for detail uh, records, so we've got five total documents that have been saved. Um, and that really basically is just, in a nutshell, how this application works. We've got, you know, the Hello World page that is the, the master document, um, which is represented by this Hello World class. And then we've got the four, in this case, we've created four detailed documents here from the repeat um, that are basically each one is represented by a instance of the Hello Country class and they get committed to the database by executing this commit to DB method, which as you can see here actually um, gets the vector and actually creates a document, sets the fields, makes it a response, and saves it. Uh, so that's really basically how, you know, very simply at a 10,000 foot overview, uh, how you can use Java in your application. Uh, we'll go in the next screencast into more detail about uh, creating individual uh, classes and how you can reference them and go back and forth and, and get down to the mechanics of, of creating that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to contact me uh, jeremy.hodge at zeta1.com or uh, at jeremyhodge on Twitter or you can always reach me through either my blog at hodgeblodge it's h-o-d-g-e-b-l-o-g-e dot com or on the X Pages blog, uh, xpagesblog dot com. Thank you very much. And that's the demo. Thanks a lot, Jeremy, for coming on the show and talking to us about uh, Java for the X Pages developers. Uh, look forward to the next contribution. Uh, if anyone else is interested in contributing to uh, Notes and Nine, either either to the extended edition or to uh, the uh, more normal uh, nine minutes uh, version show, then just let me know, and we we'll, can certainly talk about it. Uh, if you want to contact me on 
on anything non-Java related, uh, here's my information, and I thank you for your time and attention. Happy developing.